Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkle. She's sitting this one out. She's out and about today, so you're stuck with me. But we're gonna talk about James Gunn, the DCEU, and the pendulum swing. I, I've talked about it multiple times on this channel that I do feel like the pendulum is swinging back to center. Uh, we've seen so many things happen this year that, that indicate that, that I think we're over the worst part of the, uh, of, I guess the, the Hollywood wokeness, right? That's what we're gonna call it. Uh, the things are starting to go back to center. Um, and it's interesting, James Gunn put a couple of tweets out there yesterday saying that he's actually willing to listen to DC fans. Uh, this is in stark contrast to Marvel, who is going to constantly lecture you, tell you you're wrong, run you down uh, in shows, actually, mock you, mock fans in shows, uh, change the very origin and name of uh, Namor, and yeah, it's Namor, not Namor, just because Victoria Alonso wants to have uh, some personal representation in the MCU, changing everything about the character. Uh, James Gunn put in charge, along with uh, Peter Safran, of the DCEU by uh, David Zaslav at Warner Brothers, and I think things are gonna change. I think they are. I think they need to listen to fans. Uh, they're talking about releasing the uh, air cut of Suicide Squad, the original Suicide Squad, which, I wasn't a fan of that movie, and I almost didn't watch The Suicide Squad because of it. Uh, in fact, I skipped it in the theaters and waited until it was out on home video for months before I finally, finally said, you know what, I will I will check it out. I will check it out, and I loved it. I loved it. It's probably my favorite DCEU movie so far, and it got a uh, uh, got thrashed at the box office, I think, because of its predecessor, because of, again, all the drama around Suicide Squad. That wasn't just the movie succeeding or failing on its own merits. It became caught up in this web of uh, you know, pop culture wars. Uh, everything was, you know, if you didn't like the original Suicide Squad movie, you were a bigot. And I think that turned a lot of people off to to the Suicide Squad. That and the names were confusing Suicide Squad. The the Suicide Squad, Alien, Aliens, Aliens made a lot more money. Anyway, we're going to talk about this and uh, again, that pendulum swinging back and it's making people very, very angry. And I think the pendulum is eventually going to work its way into smashing through the comic book industry out of necessity. And I have to wonder how much uh, James Gunn is going to have, how much influence he's going to have over the DC comics, if he's going to be like Kevin Feige and be able to you know, have a say in what's being produced in the comic books as well, because people do not like the direction of DC Comics in the last couple of years. Uh, Daniel Cherry III came in and uh, made a hell of a mess, in my opinion, and I think uh, they're going to have to clean it up at Warner's or just outsource the whole damn thing to Todd McFarlane or something like that. We're going to talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And Rance Guy has over 280,000 subs on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify. I'm uploading some of our uh, episodes that would do well as podcasts, as podcasts over there. Uh, just kind of spread us out a little, spread, spread the fish out a little bit, grow the reef. Okay, so let's talk about this. James Gunn put this tweet thread out yesterday, and it does seem to indicate that he is open to listening to fans. Uh, he said, opened up Twitter at the end of a long creative weekend to see the many tweets to save Legends of Tomorrow and release the air cut and fan support for other DC projects over the years. The majority of the, these requests were enthusiastic and respectful. Respect is a two-way street. Maybe studios, now that they're running out of money, and we'll, we'll talk more about that, but now that they're running out of money, it seems like they are trying to claw back the fans they've lost. And we've kind of seen it with Star Trek to some degree. 
as I understand it, they're like, oh yeah, we done, we done screwed up. Marvel though, they're just, they're doubling, tripling down on it. They're doubling and tripling down on trying to piss off fans because they think they're too big to fail. Uh, the new and first ever CEO of DC Studios, Peter, and I think it's important we acknowledge you, the fans, and let you know we hear your different desires for pathways forward for DC. Although our ability to interact on Twitter has been lessened due to the workload of our new positions, we are listening and open to everything as we embark on this journey and will continue to do so for the next few years. Um, but our initial focus is on the story going forward, hammering out the new DCEU and telling the biggest story ever told across multiple films, television shows, and animated projects. We invite all the DC fandoms from across the multiverse and everyone else as well into this new universe. Everyone, <laughs> everyone into this new universe. We can't wait to reveal more. Um, now, this is interesting. Cully Hammer said, following up on this again, we obviously hear a lot in the trade media about the larger plan for DC as an entertainment studio. Me personally, I'd like to hear more about your new relationship with attention to the comics division. You're clearly into comics. That actually could be a good sign uh, that DC could course correct because whatever the hell they've been doing for the last two years is not working. It really is not working. Uh, I mean, they are creatively bankrupt. They're basically just race swapping, gender swapping, sexual identity swapping, legacy characters for shock effect to boost sales, and nobody is steering the ship. Again, it might come down to money, and it might be David Zaslav who just decides, hey, let's outsource all this stuff and uh, let Todd McFarlane deal with hiring artists or whatever because it's just not worth it for us to publish comic books ourselves anymore. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But um, this gives me a glimmer of hope. Um, and I, I just retweeted and said, hey, I want DC characters who act like themselves and creatives who don't hate the franchises they've been entrusted with. That's pretty simple. Yeah, it is a pretty simple thing to get right. And for some reason, Hollywood can't get that right. It's because the people they put in charge don't actually love the source, source material. They load the fans. They especially hate the fans that call attention to the fact that they don't love the source material. They don't know, in many cases, what they're talking about, or they don't care. Perfect example, didn't even bother doing a separate video on it, but the, the whole Namor debacle with Marvel. They literally changed everything about the character and even made up a bullshit explanation for his name that flies in the face of everything that's been in the comics. Changed the pronunciation of his name. You know, I mean, and this was, and, and if anybody questioned you on it, you, you get scolded. You get scolded on Twitter. And we'll talk about Twitter, too, because James Gunn got in trouble on Twitter, and he was uh, temporarily banned from the Mouse House for uh, a stupid joke he made like 12 years ago uh, on Twitter. He got canceled for, and then he got uncanceled. And, uh, man, I bet Kevin Feige wished he would have stayed down. But, uh, no, he's back. I think it, this is probably the best shot the DCEU has going forward. And uh, Twitter doesn't have the sway over the media as it did just a couple of weeks ago. And we're finding this out more and more. We're finding out how uh, cozy of a relationship the media has with Twitter and uh, Big Daddy, Space Daddy, Elon Musk is uh, ripping the mask off, right? So let's go out to Variety. Uh, James Gunn has shared some thoughts on the direction of DC Studios less than two weeks after being selected alongside Peter Safran as the banner's first ever co-chairman and chief executive officers. Uh, taking to Twitter, the film director and newly minted executive acknowledged recent online fan movements and teased the biggest story ever told for DC across film and television. We opened up Twitter. We told you that. We opened it up. I'm cautiously optimistic. The acknowledgement of both hashtags comes as organization among fans to demand per, uh, particular projects from DC has become commonplace. Legends of Tomorrow was canceled by the CW in April of 2022 without being renewed for an eighth season. That's a CW thing. They could always move it to HBO Max. I don't know. Uh, demand for a director's cut of the Suicide Squad uh, has been reignited, especially after Warner Brothers commissioned a new edition of Justice League. Uh, while Gunn didn't promise any particular response to either movement, he emphasized a belief in the benefits of opening a dialogue with fans. Okay. 
So they're signed to a four year deal. And remember, James Gunn has given us Peacemaker and The Suicide Squad, which in my opinion are two of the best things to come out of the DCEU. Um, now I don't want every DC project to be jokey like that. It worked with The Suicide Squad given the characters that were, were chosen. But, uh, you know, when everything is Guardians of the Galaxy, nothing is. So hopefully they can kind of rein that in a little bit. But I am cautiously optimistic. And look, they got to do something. People are excited about Henry Cavill coming back. Uh, why they're moving forward with the Flash movie other than financial reasons beyond me. You know, maybe it's good. Maybe it's a good movie with a shitty actor. I have, I have no idea. Maybe it's, maybe it's an amazing movie. But Black Adam is not doing that well uh, overall. It's doing better than Shazam, which isn't really saying much. Um, so I'm kind of surprised. It had a pretty good opening weekend. Pretty good, but not great. Uh, after three weeks of release, Black Adam has generated $137.3 million in North America and $319 million globally. It's a solid result, one that improves upon the Suicide Squad, which wasn't hard to do. Uh, and it'll soon pass Shazam, which earned $366 million worldwide. However, the latest Warner Brothers standalone superhero story still has a way to go to justify its massive $195 million production budget. I don't think The Flash is going to do... Well, it might. Because, look, The Flash is a better-known character than Black Adam, obviously. And while uh, Ezra Miller has gotten a lot of backlash... People probably will turn out to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. I mean, let's be honest. I, I would go, even if he was only in the movie for like 10 minutes, I'd be like, yeah, I got to go see Michael Keaton as Batman. Um, so, yeah, this is um, this is not uh, not a good place really to be in right now. And I think they can only go up from here. I think opening dialogue with fans and actually being respectful of fans is a complete 180 from what Marvel's doing right now, from what Lucasfilm is doing right now. Uh, scolding fans, lecturing fans, and fans will reward you financially if you listen to them. Uh, and DC is not hard to get right. It really isn't. Actually, I would argue it's easier to bring DC heroes to the screen the right way than it is to bring Marvel characters to the screen the right way. Um, you know, their DC characters are uh, arguably more iconic their personalities, their uh, backstories are more well-known to the general public, like their deal. Like you don't have to explain Batman or Superman to your average person. They get it. They know the deal. Everybody knows Bruce Wayne's rich. He's nuts. He dresses like a bat and his parents are dead. Everybody knows that. But then you have to explain like Ant-Man to like a normie. Explain Ant-Man. Explain... Nova, you know, it, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's so much easier, and yet they still get it wrong. Henry Cavill is an amazing Superman. I think he has the potential to be an amazing Superman. He absolutely looks the part, and he's a damn good actor. But I don't like mopey-ass Superman. Like, let's, let's have a more positive, uplifting, heroic Superman Um Starring Henry Cavill. And we'll see where we're at. Just get just get one Superman movie right. Just get one Superman movie right. And make us believe a man can fly again. And I think we'll be uh we'll be in pretty good shape. So I was looking at this, and this is a uh left left-leaning political blog. And they basically are saying that uh we reached peak wokeness in 2020. And because of the summer of love, there's actually been kind of quiet dissent against the movement, even from the left. They're like, we went too far. Uh, we went too far and the public is rejecting it. Um, you know, and again, this is coming from somebody on the left who follows politics. He said, many realize that much of what was being done in the name of wokeness didn't make any sense. Defund the police collided with the reality of rising crime. People were calling out that Chaz made a laughing stock of the BLM movement that, um, you know, look at this to an overwhelmingly working class, upwardly mobile and patriotic population with kitchen table concerns. The idea of America as a racist hellhole was absurd. 
It soon became plausible in moderate to liberal circles to voice sentiments that fell short of blanket endorsement of uh, the BLM ideology and orthodoxy. Now, this isn't just to talk about that. I'm just saying in general. Something is going on. Companies are waking up to the fact that they've been chasing the wrong audience for the last five or six years now to their financial detriment. And a big part of that is them hiring and Disney's doing it and they need to undo it. Hiring activists to helm major multi-million dollar, billion dollar franchises to use that platform not to tell the best stories or the biggest stories ever told, but to scold and lecture the audience, right? To tell the fans they're wrong, it doesn't matter what the studio does, the fans are wrong. The fans are racist, the fans are bigots, the fans are misogynists. It's always, always, always the fans fault. And we have seen so many moves from companies in the last couple of months to indicate that there is some course correction going on if for no other reason, then they don't want to go broke. That's that's basically it. And I think Disney is going to have to learn a very painful lesson. So they knock the shit off that they're doing over there. Because again, every movie they do, every Marvel movie should be a slam dunk. Every show should be a slam dunk. But they're absolutely positively putting their ideology over telling a story. It sounds like James Gunn is like, no, let's tell the best stories ever told, the best superhero stories ever told with some of the best characters ever created. Fans, what do you want to see? This is a very good first step. Whether or not he'll be allowed to carry that out, uh, I don't know. But Zaslav, at the end of the day, is only interested in the bottom line and in money. And you know what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'll believe it when I see it, but it's encouraging. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.